You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Thursday, December 7th. In a powerful keynote address at the National Association of Christian Lawmakers Gala Dinner in Washington, D.C., U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson emphasized America's current ideological struggle and its foundational principles. Johnson, honored with the NACL American Patriot Award for Christian Honor and Courage, highlighted the, quote, greatest collection of challenges since World War II and the Civil War, stemming from differing political worldviews. He encouraged trust in God, echoing the national motto and emphasizing the unique American creed of inalienable rights granted by God, not government. Stressing the need for clarity and conviction, Johnson urged Christian conservatives to educate the next generation on foundational truths and articulate conservative principles like individual freedom and the rule of law. Other notable moments included the honoring of Glenn and Jenny Story, founders of Patriot Mobile, with the NACL Salt and Light Award for Christian Leadership, and Andrew Womack receiving the George Washington Lifetime Christian Leadership Award. The event underscored the importance of faith in American leadership and the recognition of Christian values in shaping national policies. The Biden administration's proposed rule changes to the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program have drawn sharp criticism from pro-life advocacy groups and over 36 federal lawmakers. The changes, outlined by the Department of Health and Human Services, aim to apply a reasonable person standard for fund allocation, potentially impacting pro-life pregnancy centers' access to federal funds. Critics, including a coalition of 11 U.S. senators and 18 House members, argue that the proposed rules undermine TANF's objectives by targeting pregnancy centers and alternatives to abortion programs. They assert that these centers fulfill all TANF purposes and accuse the Health and Human Services of targeting them for their pro-life stance rather than fund misuse. This move, they claim, could deprive pregnant women of essential support. Additionally, organizations like Human Coalition and Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America have condemned the proposal, highlighting its potential impact on needy families and accusing it of being discriminatory and non-viewpoint neutral. The proposal's implication that pregnancy resource centers are ineligible for TANF funding while not applying the same standards to other entities, like Planned Parenthood, has been particularly controversial. In 2022, churches experienced a notable decrease in cash donations for the first time in a decade, as reported by the 2023 Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability, or ECFA, State of Giving Report. The report, spearheaded by ECFA President and CEO Michael Martin, analyzed financial statements from 2,000 ECFA members, representing over $25 billion in annual donations. The ECFA, comprising Christ-centered nonprofits and churches, observed a 0.7% decline in cash donations, which constitute 80.7% of their annual revenue. Notably, churches with annual revenues below $20 million faced significant drops in cash giving, contrasting with churches earning over $20 million, which saw a 2.3% increase. The report, prepared by ECFA's Warren Byrd and Jake Lapp, attributes the disparity to ministries having broader appeal across denominations and faiths, unlike churches which rely primarily on their congregants. The first three quarters of 2023, however, showed a rebound in cash giving, with 60% of churches reporting an increase, signaling a more optimistic financial outlook for 2024. In Redbud, Illinois, a teacher at Redbud High School was reported for concealing an LGBT club from parents by naming it Bubbles. This revelation emerged after Parents Defending Education shared emails obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request highlighting discussions among teachers about hiding the Gender and Sexualities Alliance group from parents. The Redbud teacher admitted to using Google Classroom for club activities, avoiding parent invitations. Jonathan Tallman, superintendent of Redbud Community Unit School District 132, condemned the action, stating, quote, Keeping information from parents is absolutely wrong. He assured that the teacher involved is no longer employed and the club is inactive. Tallman emphasized the district's policy, asserting parents' rights to know their children's club memberships. The policy reflects federal law's stance on student clubs, which prohibits the denial of club formation based on content paralleling religious and LGBT clubs. Additionally, the district's policies align with the 14th Amendment, emphasizing parental rights in directing their children's upbringing and education, including bathroom usage policies based on sex rather than gender identity. The Collinsville Community Unit School District 10 and Waterloo School District were also mentioned in relation to similar discussions, though the Waterloo District did not comment. 
Canadian lawmakers unanimously opposed a report by the Canadian Human Rights Commission, or CHRC, which labeled Christmas and Easter a systemic religious discrimination due to their status as statutory holidays. This stance was taken during a session of the House of Commons on November 30th. The adopted motion emphasized denouncing efforts to polarize these long-standing cultural events in Quebec and Canada, while encouraging unity as the Christmas season approaches. The issue sparked a heated debate between Bloc Quebecois, House Leader Alan Thierrin, who introduced the motion, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Thierrin provocatively questioned if Christmas and elements like Santa Claus and snow were racist, to which Trudeau responded by dismissing the question as ridiculous, affirming Canada's diverse and inclusive nature. The CHRC paper, published on October 23rd, argued that non-Christians in Canada might face challenges due to the exclusive recognition of Christian holidays, suggesting this is a legacy of colonialism. It highlighted the need for accommodations for non-Christian religious observances and raised concerns about everyday religious tolerance issues, such as microaggressions and cultural insensitivity. The paper recommended greater awareness and inclusion of diverse religious and cultural days beyond Christian holidays to combat religious intolerance. In a significant legal development, former Southern Baptist Convention President Johnny Hunt is embroiled in a case where Judge Jeffrey Friendsley has ordered the unsealing of documents by Guidepost Solutions. These documents, including audio recordings, a private journal, and text messages, relate to allegations of sexual abuse against Hunt. Despite Guidepost's concerns about breaching its contract with the SBC and potentially harming the alleged victim, the judge ruled that privacy is sufficiently protected due to redactions. Hunt, implicated in the 2022 Guidepost report, is accused of sexually assaulting a woman in 2010, a claim he denies, admitting only to a consensual encounter. His return to ministry, supported by a group of pastors, faces opposition from current SBC leadership. In a twist, Hunt has sued the SBC, its executive committee, and Guidepost Solutions for defamation, challenging the portrayal of his actions in the report. The unsealed documents further reveal the involvement of prominent attorney Baz Chivijian, who represents the alleged victim. Hunt's legal team contends that his inclusion in the Guidepost report was a strategic move to distract from the SBC's historical failures in addressing sexual abuse. On Sunday, December 3rd, Upstate Church of South Carolina, also known as First Baptist Simpsonville, witnessed a remarkable event as 141 individuals were baptized in a single day. This multi-site megachurch with six campuses and about 7,000 members experienced a surge of faith with 86 people pre-registering for baptism and an additional 55 making the decision during the service. Lead Pastor Wayne Bray described the event as a profound experience, likening it to living out the Book of Acts. He emphasized that each decision was verified by a minister before the baptism. The church, known for its steady growth, had never experienced such a large number of spontaneous baptisms before, with their previous record being 35 in a day. Bray highlighted the church's commitment to discipleship, mentioning their systemic approach to nurturing new believers through small groups and mentoring. This event is part of a larger trend of religious revival and mass baptisms across the United States, including a notable gathering at Pirate's Cove Beach in California, where approximately 4,500 people were baptized, an event linked to the influence of the film Jesus Revolution. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts on iPhone, Spotify on iPhone or Android, or Google Podcasts in your Android device. Don't forget you can download the Edify app by searching for Edify, E-D-I-F-I, in the iPhone or Android app stores. There you can access our entire network of faith-based and uplifting podcasts. You can also subscribe to the Christian Post Daily Newsletter and get the top headlines every day delivered right to your inbox. You can click the links to download the Edify app or subscribe to the newsletter in the podcast episode description. We would also appreciate a five-star rating and review in the Apple Podcasts app or in Spotify. Thank you for listening. This has been the Christian Post Daily Podcast.